wonderful. If you need access to the Etherpad, we, we definitely want to know that you're here. So keep sign, sign your name on the Etherpad. I just put a link to it in the chat. Um, may I have a volunteer for a note taker? Someone to jot down notes if there are any, any interesting topics that come up that we can, that Marco can take back to the mentoring group. I know. Nobody wants to work, Marco. Just kidding. <laughs> Alicia or Alicia? Alicia. Alicia. Thank you for volunteering. I really do appreciate it. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to pass things over to Marco, who is our mentoring chair for the Instructor Development Committee, and he'll take us forward. Marco? Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. I don't know. It's evening for me, so it's very late. Um, so this is the first time for me, so I hope to be able to lead you in a proper way. So maybe I uh, can propose to do a quick uh, uh, presentation for everyone, and then we, we can start with the, uh, the virtual showcase from each group. Um, so maybe I can start and then in the order you are in my screen, I will call you so you can introduce yourself, say if you are a mentor or mentees, where you work and maybe a couple of things about you. So my name is Marco. Uh, I'm currently living in Italy and I work as a bioinformatician working on plant viruses um, and for many years I'm an uh, instructor for the carpentries and uh, this year, basically, I uh, take this uh, position as a mentoring leader. Uh, but I think the mentor, the real, the real mentor did all the job. So <laughs> I just try to uh, keep things uh, going forward. So uh, the first one on my screen is Mike and his fellow mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm Mike Tresna. I'm uh, the... Smithsonian, uh, specifically we're at the Natural History Museum, um, and I was a mentor of the uh, teaching workshops group. My name is Miriam Tsushia. Um, I'm a postdoc fellow here at, at OCIO and at the Natural History Museum, and I was a mentee in the group. Uh, I think you're Sorry. Kari, you you are the the next one. Do you want to introduce yourself? Me? Yes. <laughs> so I'm Carrie Jordan, a carpentry's instructor and trainer, and I live in Central Florida in the United States. And this is my third year uh, with the carpentries. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, and Megan. Hey everyone, so I, I work at New Zealand eScience Infrastructure and based in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I'm the regional coordinator for New Zealand and just here to learn about mentoring. I, I don't know much about it, so I'm really curious. Thank you very much to join. Angela. Hi everyone, um, I'm a research specialist and the R Spatial Advocate at the Center for Spatial Data Science at the University of Chicago. Um, I've been leading the Organizing Workshops Mentoring Group. I'm really proud of what we've done this uh, summer and excited for uh, Gladys and Jessica to share. Thank you, Angela. And Tracy, you are the next one. Hi, I'm Tracy Teal. I'm the Executive Director of the Carpentries. So I've been with Data Carpentry and an instructor of the Carpentries for, for many years. I'm based in uh, Davis, California in the United States. And I uh, this is like my favorite thing every quarter to come to the Mentoring Showcase. So I'm super excited to be here and hear what everybody's been working on. Thank you very much to, to join, to find the time to join. <laughs> and the next one is uh, GKA6A. I suppose it's not your real name. Yeah, no, that is me, guys. And my apologies for that. I just changed jobs two days ago. So I uh, just, uh, you know, joined it, uh, the University of Virginia two days ago. So you guys can hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, that is. So, so I had a computational scientist um, and just started with research computing in Virginia and just moved from Indiana to a uh, very scenery here. 
Girls, thank you for joining, and uh, Tisha. Hi, everybody. I am a research librarian at NC State in the United States. Um, I am here as a community member. This is one that I've finally been able to attend, so I'm really excited. Thank you for joining, and Sarah is the next one. No, sorry, Mara. Hi, I'm Mara Sedlins. I'm a data management specialist in the library at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, uh, Colorado. Um, I was just certified as a carpentries instructor in the spring, and I was a mentee in um, the teaching workshops group. Good, thank you very much. And Jessica is the next one. Hi, I am also a data management librarian. I'm at the University of Texas in Austin. Um, and I am a mentee of Angela and her organizing workshops group and really happy to have some great mentorship here. Good. And the last one is Alicia. Hi, my name is Alicia Clark. Um, I'm a postdoc in bioengineering at the University of Washington in Seattle in the United States. Um, and I was a mentee in the teaching workshop group this summer. Good. Thank you very much, everyone, to introduce. I think I'm the only not English speaker. It's big pressure. Oh, good. Gladys. Oh, finally, your name is Gladys. <laughs> So uh, the purpose of this, uh, uh, this call is basically to um, show the uh, work that did the three, uh, to actually that should be four different groups, but for this round we had only, only three, uh, three different groups. So the showcase is to uh, basically show the work that they did, the progress that they made, and the uh, goals that the, every group achieves. So uh, each group uh, should have prepared one single slide. So now the big question is they have to share the screen or share the slide, right? So I think they can do it uh, in, carry. they have to, what they have to do to share the screen? Right, directly. It's just, the there is a share button, right? Okay, yes. they can do, okay. So at the bottom of the application, there is a share button. I think you can uh, share your screen. Uh, the, the, the person that have the presentation uh, can do that. And so they will present what they, they did during the, uh, this three months of work, basically. Uh, and then people can ask questions, we can discuss, we can interact. So please do it. And uh, we can start maybe with uh, Mike's group, the teaching one. It's fine for you guys. Sure, I, I was gonna try and flip a coin with Angela real quick, but <laughs> it doesn't work over a line. All right, so I want to see if I can share screen. Oh, and now I can't get to the tab. Okay, and that looks great. Okay, so everyone can see. Yes. Yes. All right, great. So I'm going to start out, I'll do like a, a quick introduction of our group and we've got uh, three of our members here today. So I'll let them, I guess, and talk about their, their own um, goals and accomplishments. Um, so we're the, the teaching workshops uh, group and um, we, I'm gonna jump right into the our something cool to share. Uh, if you see all the the names on the right with the photos, I I put the the times that we ended up uh, deciding on to to meet every every other week. Um, we were from very um, disparate time zones, so uh, Alicia was was waking up at at 8 a.m. to meet with us, and uh, Avisala, who's uh, wasn't able to join us today, but um, she's in South Africa and was joining us at 5 p.m. So it was it was a, definitely a, a big hurdle to um, to meet up regularly. Um, and I, I appreciate that everyone was able to, to meet up when they were able to. Um, and our group was teaching workshops and we kind of in general um, talked about uh, the different types of workshops that people might want to teach and then also getting uh, connected to uh, different uh, uh, 
local communities. So I'm going to put Miriam on the spot since we're unmuted right now. Do you want to just <laughs> talk about specifically your, your goals? Uh, sure. So my goal, my goal specifically was to um, teach a different carpentry lesson in each workshop that we had here during the, the mentoring program. Um, and the reason for that is one to figure out how long it takes to prepare uh, to teach a lesson, but also to develop some sort of like confidence and yes, I can do this. It's a subject I'm not super familiar with, but um, just to feel better um, as a mentor and feel more confident, which uh, would make him more uh, useful in future workshops in general. So um, now we had three workshops going on here at Smithsonian during that timeline. And in each workshop, I taught a different lesson. So that was, I achieved my goal, which was good. And it was good to have the, the mentoring group um, because it helped me to, help, it really helped with accountability. So I had to, <laughs> I had to do it, or I felt like I had to do it. I, I didn't feel pressure, but I felt like the encouragement of having a group to report to and, and to, to talk about it, those experiences. So it was good. Okay, now Mara or Alicia, you want to talk about your, your goals? I'm um, sure this is Mara. I can talk a little bit. Um, so I was just certified as a carpentries instructor in the spring. Um, and I've helped out at a couple of workshops, but one of my goals is to actually um, find collaborators in my region or in my institution to organize um, data carpentry workshops. I'm, I'm particularly interested in some of the newer um, kind of more discipline specific workshops like the social sciences curriculum um, and something that's a little bit tricky about my goals is that they depend on other people. Um, I can't just do this by myself. Uh, so I did make some inroads in terms of identifying potential collaborators on campus um, but they haven't been in a position to be ready to organize something concrete yet. Um, so I'm not completely in, in control of, of that. Um, but I did meet with some people from the Social Science Research Institute here. Um, and it sounds like there's some interest uh, potentially in the genomics curriculum as well from our College of Agricultural Sciences. Um, and then also Mike um, let me know about the regional groups. So there's a, actually a local Colorado group that I'm planning to reach out to once I have a better sense of what I'm what I'm planning. Um, so I think that'll be a great resource moving forward. Okay, and how about uh, Alicia? Hi, uh, so as Mike said, my time was at 8 a.m. So I did not that well at making meetings because 8 a.m. on a Monday isn't, uh, I don't know, I never seem to remember it. But luckily I was able to um, come to some of the meetings and meet the other people in the group. So that was nice. Um, but I wanted to kind of focus on getting more involved with the carpentry program um, at the University of Washington and learning um, about some of the other um, like lessons that we typically teach um, at the workshops here. So I had never um, participated in the Python workshop. Um, so I was able to um, go in and help um, at the last uh, Python workshop that we had in the beginning of October. And I also um, went through and kind of reviewed some of the other lessons um, that I hadn't taught before. Um, so I like, went through the Git um, le lesson because that's pretty commonly taught here at the University of Washington. So hopefully um, when next quarter starts in January, I can um, instruct one of the lessons for that. Um, so that's kind of what I worked on. Yeah, so, and uh, Abisala wasn't able to, to join us um, because if it was five o'clock at 11, I can't do that math. It's, it's very late for her there. Um, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., something like that. Yeah, so um, she, uh, her goals had to do with uh, also um, teaching at, at her local workshops. And um, 
hers were kind of uh, surprising to us, at least that the size of the workshops that they were putting on, they were like over a hundred attendees, which was uh, really interesting and intimidating to, <laughs> to me at least, um, depending or compared to what, what the size that we normally handle. Um, and yeah, just to wrap it up at, at the bottom, we, um, we kind of settled early on on uh, following the approach of an accountability group, like Marion uh, mentioned, where we we came up with our goals early on, and I couldn't claim to be a, a mentor because I'm just half a step ahead of all of the group or the members in my group. So um, it, it was more putting together a meeting so that people um, had people to uh, report to about their their progress on their goals. And it was, um, uh, Mara mentioned this at the last meeting, that it was great to, to hear from each other about some things that didn't, that don't quite work for, on a day-to-day um, -day basis in uh, carpentry's programs. Because um, we, we always hear about all the success stories, which are, which are great, but there's a lot to learn from what doesn't work. This is great. Sorry. Um... Go ahead. I know I see Tracy has a hand, but yeah, the same. the same. Awesome. Can we ask questions? Can we unshare so we can see and then um, open the floor for questions? Yeah, so stop the share. Yeah, okay. Tracy? So, Tracy, feel free. Thanks. This is super awesome. And I love your point around we're good at sharing successes, but not at the challenges. And I wonder if this group came up with thoughts on uh, how to, to better share that some of that, you know, you just need kind of these private groups or the discussion sessions, but if there might be ways to put more information out there or share blog posts um, that highlight the, the challenges as, as well as the successes. Um, Maybe what would have been useful <laughs> to you, you know, where, you know, what would, what would have been good to see or hear? I, I don't think we came up with anything very specific, but it's more like the, the act of, of, of sharing stories. Um, but I, you mentioned like a blog post or something, that for sure would be something that would be interesting to, to see, to have, I don't know, maybe uh, more um, people who have more experience organizing and teaching workshops to, to put a blog post about um, how do I prepare for a workshop or what have I tried and it didn't work within the context that I was working with. And, not working for one person doesn't mean it's not going to work for anybody, but at least it means that it didn't work in that context. So that that type of stuff. I had a question. Um, I can't remember who it was that their goal was to teach a different lesson. That was me. <laughs> that was me again. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, so my question, what what made you want to teach another lesson? Because this is something that I'm thinking about often. We're, as, as a trainer, we're always trying to encourage, um, you know, just because you check out in software carpentry doesn't mean you can't teach library carpentry, for example. So I guess why why was this your goal? And what would you tell other instructors? How, how could we encourage other instructors to branch out beyond the lessons that they're used to teaching? Um, for me specifically was because, I don't know, I, I feel insecure about teaching sometimes. And I thought that if I kind of force myself to do something that I knew was gonna be hard, it would actually give me more confidence. And it worked, could have backfired. Uh, I could have ended in a situation where I was like, nope, that doesn't work, one at a time. I'm gonna teach the same thing forever. But I, I think it helped at least to understand that 
having time to prep and, and all of that and understand how like how is my way like how do I prep for a lesson that, that type of stuff so I think that it helps with not only teaching carpentries but like any other workshop so it was more really to develop confidence that I'm capable of doing that and, uh, Isad and Lisha also had the same goal right thank you I have a question more or less on the same uh, on the same line um, uh, and it's for everyone in the in the uh, mentoring group so if you discuss about how much expert should be a teacher um, because I mean sometimes I have the feeling that uh, as you are too expert it become more complicated to explain the lesson and uh, as uh, uh, Miriam was saying, probably to teach something which you are not so confident, you have to study and to try to understand how to teach this lesson or this concept or the goal of the lesson. That's definitely something I consider, um, I, well, I don't consider myself to be an expert at all, actually. And so I want to be prepared and I, I think that I over-prepare because I'm not an expert and, I, and I'm always trying to put myself in the shoes of my learners, especially for, for example, you know, the data carpentry R lesson. Um, it is written for, you know, novices to competent practitioners, I guess. And so I'm always trying to put myself in that mindset um, because I don't, I do not feel like I'm an expert. <laughs> I think this is something where it can be really helpful to have co-teachers or helpers um, that have different areas of expertise so that if you do get um, a more detailed question, um, about analyses in a particular discipline or with a particular tool, it would be nice to have people on hand that do use that every day and it's their area of expertise so they can kind of help answer those more um, detailed questions, but, but still have the perspective of a novice um, as yourself. Yes, and, and teaching the social science curriculum, um, one of the best things I did was recruit um, people who had just migrated from SETA to R to, to be a helper at my workshop. So um, people in the audience would have questions about, you know, using SETA, and I haven't used SETA that much, um, but um, our helper was able to sort of come in and be like, oh yes, like if you understand this concept in SETA, this is the same thing. And I was like, thank you so much. And she was, she was phenomenal. So that was one, I, I second that. Good, any other question? So should we move to the next group, Angela? Um, sure, I guess I, I'll go ahead and start presenting, but I think Jessica and Gladys should start um, because um, they, they were just amazing mentees. So I'm gonna go ahead and share one screen. Give me one second. Um, see if I can find my, ooh, I have so many things open. Um, I think it's this. Okay. And, okay. All right. Um, so this was the organizing mentoring, or organizing workshops mentoring group, but uh, Jessica, you should start. Well, it was, am I muted? No, I'm, I'm not muted, it's good. <laughs> um, it was great. I was um, really nervous about um, putting on my first workshop, which I did in the, in the midst of our, of our mentor group. And um, I, I just can't, say enough about how useful it was to bounce ideas off of people and to to hear different perspectives from different um types of organizations in our first meeting we had a bunch of folks who were not from academic um settings who i think they were mostly from south africa is that right angela um yeah. and there were a lot of really interesting perspectives in there that just hadn't even occurred to me about um not being in an academic setting. Um, but generally it was just fantastic for a confidence boost in that first workshop and it ended up being a, a 
big hit and then we wrote a blog post about it which um, I think is linked to there yeah I'll put a link in the chat so, it's yes. so um, something that we were really really excited about um, slash um, <laughs> Jessica and I were like, we have to get this done before the mentoring showcase was, um, we had an amazing conversation one day and I think I took three pages of notes and then we're like, we should probably just make this into a blog post. Yeah. And so <laughs> we made it into a blog post and it's a long blog post, but um, <laughs> hopefully it's good enough for someone who's just getting started um, to read it and feel confident in doing that. Um, Jessica and I both like looked at each other at the end of writing it and we're like, you know, this would have been so helpful for us once, like when we organized our first one. So um, that's the goal of that. Um, something else we did was um, put together, uh, I, I put together like slide decks for each of the sessions. I, I think organizing workshops is a little bit different in that um, it's less of a sort of, I, I think it's as much a logistical, like, balancing all the pieces and sort of like building a team and things like that. like it's as much a logistical challenge as it is like a personal development sort of activity so um building out resources for people to like wade through that logistical like you know dip, like challenge um was really helpful um i hope um so there's an etherpad well, with like the youtube channel like um i think we recorded one mentoring group session which is on the youtube channel and then we also have like a few slide decks um, Gladys, I don't know if you wanted to share something about your experience. Okay, sorry, I had a hard time unmuting myself. Um, so in my case, I am really, I was in a really good luck because um, even though that I joined it, the mentoring session a little bit late, uh, but it was just right on time for me because uh, like I mentioned, I just moved to institutions and uh, the plan is that we should be able to teach some of the uh, software carpentry workshops during the spring. And so I wanted to prepare myself to know everything that I needed to know to have to get a workshop running before I joined it, uh, the institution. And so uh, the blog that they wrote that um, Angela and Jessica wrote is just coming so handy for me because right. it's why they are accessible, uh, available in all the information and the things they had to go through to be able to just set up all the logistics associated with it. So now it's right there just uh, for me to read into it and you know, just to get it started. So um, it has been a great experience. Angela is amazing, by the way, uh, you know, as a mentor, she has been very diligent, making sure that we had what we needed, willing to do one-on-one -on -one sessions if that's what, it, you know, that's what we needed. So it has been really an amazing um, experience uh, for me. I, it has been so rich and now I have, I get to have all the information that I need for my next screen so that I can set up the workshops. I'll also mention that Gladys moved to my hometown. So I was, oh, I was yeah. pretty excited about that as well. <laughs> and so we had a, we had a chat about that too. <laughs> and I will, I will mention too that Angela put both of us in touch with some really helpful contacts, both in, in, Gladys's new town and um, for me in the libraries community. So it was really, that was nice to have that, that extra connectivity. Absolutely a great experience. Um, I think for the, for, for all of us that we were, you know, part of this and I have so much enjoyed, you know, and I look forward for the opportunities where, you know, instead of being a mentee, we become mentors, you know. Um, so it's looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I will mention that, you know, it hadn't been that long before I became a mentor or that I had organized my first workshop ever. So I think it was, um, I think I organized my own personal workshop by myself um, only maybe five months before becoming a mentor. Um, but sort of at that point, I, I felt like there were still things that were new and, and things that I remember being really difficult for me um, at the beginning. So um, even though I hadn't had years of experience organizing workshops, um, I figured that I could sort of share what, what I knew from that um, with anyone sort of. So sorry, Marco, if you thought I had like <laughs> multiple years of organizing Carpentries workshops, um, I'd, I'd been um, sort of thrown into it myself. So um, that was something that I'd like to emphasize. If you're interested in becoming like a mentor or a mentee, you don't have to be like an expert. You know, you can be a competent practitioner. So. 
But that's great too, because we were able to have a lot of really fresh conversations about the the new things that you learned and the like the the misses that we wanted to try to avoid. I think that's it for us. Um, does anyone have any questions? This is Carrie. I did just want to echo how amazing that blog post was. And I wish, okay. I, I, it's kind of, it's one of those things where I don't want to ask, but I kind of want to ask like, how many of you all read our blog? Because there's so much good stuff. That is one post that I've, I've definitely been trying to share in my, in smaller community meetings. And even as a trainer, like I just, got done uh, teaching instructor training at the University of Georgia. And, and mm -hmm. I'm like, and here's a blog post, you know, <laughs> like there's just so many opportunities. So if you all haven't read it yet, I really do encourage everyone to read it and share it with your local communities and other instructors. Cause it's, there's so much, so much good information in that post. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Any other question? No. Okay. Yes, uh, Tracy. So speaking of thinking of all the places to link to it from, uh, you know, for people organizing workshops, uh, where, where would you look for information, you know, as you're going to organize your, your first workshop? You don't necessarily think to look at the blog. Uh, but maybe, you know, the handbook, instructor training, other places where you think it would be great to put this listed as a resource? The handbook is where I spent most of my time. I think that was, that's sort of like, where do we find resources to find, um, to help us with organizing our workshops was something that I think all of us had a question with I think there's we sort of discovered over time and because I was like a mentor I had to go through sort of like and see if there were any resources because I didn't want to repeat anything that was already out there I think it's even for me as a mentor it was sort of um, I think there are a lot of resources that have accumulated over many years um, I think there's a post from 2016 that Aaron wrote about um, you know the resources but that hasn't necessarily you know like it gets buried under <laughs> more blog posts and, and I think like the handbook can sometimes be like, it's a lot of information. And um, so <laughs> like trying to figure out what's like the best information design for someone coming into organizing workshops. Um, so that's sort of what motivated the blog post. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's definitely the handbook. Definitely. I think in person, like people knowing about resources is really useful as well. But honestly, like the mentoring structure worked for us as well. I think the, for, the end book is a super good place where to look, but it's just a manual. You have a lot of information and probably just the blog post is just a, a summary or the mentoring group is the perfect place where to talk with people that usually is the easiest way to get information. Right. It's, it's almost as if the handbook has too many audiences. Um, so like half the audience of the handbook is, you know, people internal to the carpentry. Some of it are people who want to instruct for the first time. And like both of like those audiences require like different resources. So, and, but it's also like sort of frustrating if like, yeah. So I'm, I'm just wondering, like, maybe there's a better way to think about the user personas of like the resources we create, but you know, like as, um, resources evolve over time, it's sort of hard to plan for that. I think another really important source of information for me is just the experience of being at a workshop and being a helper. Something that came up in our group was the idea that ideally you would get um, trained as an instructor and then maybe you'd have the opportunity to be a helper at a couple of workshops and then kind of teach maybe one module um, and then take on more gradually. Um, and that's not always possible for everybody depending on what your environment is. Um, but I think that experience of just physically seeing what a workshop is like and what it takes, especially at your particular institution, can be really helpful. Yeah, I really like the idea of sort of progressing through uh, carpentry sort of life cycle. So sort of we start as like a helper and then this is exactly, like that's exactly the model we use at UChicago is people help and then we like encourage them to be instructors and then we like 
slowly push them to teaching like as instructors after they get certified and then um you know some of the instructors that have gotten certified i've like slowly brought them on to like doing some of the organizing and like um sort of outreach so i think that's very much like a very accurate sort of model of how it works in the real world Thank you, Angela. Any other question? No. So I cannot see Sarah, that was the mentor for the um, the the other mentoring group. There is someone from Sarah's group. The maintainer lesson. No. Okay. So we mi we missed completely one group, but anyway. So. Um, if there are no any, any other question, um, uh, we can approach to the conclusion of the meeting. But before to do that, I really like to do a carpentry style thing and ask all, to the, all the mentees uh, to put up a green and red sticky notes. And it's very important for us to know what it really worked very well and something that we can uh, improve. Um, and after that, I will tell you the next step for the mentoring groups that we discuss with the uh, current mentors and uh, Carrie. So the, can the mentees just say one thing that worked very well and something that they want to improve? So, I can go first. Yeah. Um, I think that the small group was really the best possible size we had we had um a kind of a roving group that went in and out um but our best conversations were when we were really tiny and i liked that about about it had an intimate feel it really felt like personalized mentorship um and i'm struggling to think of a, a thing i would do differently <laughs> except maybe um so, and I, I don't even know how to do this, but making sure that we had the same folks in the group from time to time, but I don't know how to do that. So yeah, I think I sort of, <laughs> that's a little bit my fault. I was like, oh, anyone can come to this group. And then I think you're oh, totally okay. right that um, yeah, I think well, that's glad it. it was inclusive. It was, it was just me. <laughs> I was like, Sorry. more people can benefit from this, right? But I, I think you're totally right in that the best mentoring really happened in a one-on-one -on -one sort of like one-on-two um, content. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's mentoring me. That's the so. nature of it. Right. And I want to know how to become a mentor. Mm, I think that I need to add, um, you know, just really emphasize, um, definitely um, having a mentor that is willing and available, you know, and flexible, that really helps. Right. And um, for me, that was my experience um, here with Angela. And I, I really appreciated that because, you know, um, like I said, I was, you know, I find out about the mentorship program a little bit late. And so I came late to uh, when she started teaching the second session, but she was able to help me to catch up with everything to a point where, you know, I feel like I am ready uh, to go once I need to start preparing uh, and organizing my own worship. So. Um, if there is one thing that to improve, uh, it would be, I guess, the consistency of having, you know, the, the, the same people because allows to create, you know, um, relationships, right? And you, and you want to be able to do that, right? You want to be able to create that community and, and consistency, I think that is um, key for that. But, you know, I really don't have anything um, else to add more than say I'm really thankful for Angela. I think that she has been a great mentor. I'm so lucky to have both of you as my mentees. It was, it was just a great experience. I would not do it again in a heartbeat. Miriam, Mara, and uh, Alicia, do you have something to say? So I would um, also say that I really appreciated the, the flexibility of our group and mentor and how accommodating everyone was. Um, I really enjoyed hearing about 
a variety of different perspectives. People were, as you saw, from all over the globe uh, or all over the country, um, and hearing about people's different kind of institutional contexts and goals was really interesting. Um, it was challenging, though, for all of us to be there at every meeting, uh, so we weren't able to always have the consistency of following how people were progressing from week to week. Um, and then I also, I think I'd actually hoped to sign up for the workshop organizing group, so maybe I can have a chance to participate in that next time. But as I said, um, it was really helpful to hear the perspective of people focusing on teaching as well, and the group was flexible to accommodate, you know, everyone's goals. Yeah, I think I just have I... a, a oh. <laughs> sorry, I just have a quick question um, because I'm unfamiliar with how the um, mentor mentoring groups work. So each group has a kind of a topic. So whether it's like the workshop organizing group or something and and there's like fixed number at the start of the mentoring year or I don't know how it like how what's the structure and how do you get involved. So yes, it's exactly like that. So uh, for the moment, we have four different tracks and one is uh, about the workshops. So it's teaching and organize the workshop. And the other two are about uh, maintaining the lessons that we already have. And the fourth one that we didn't have this year was about the uh, building new communities. So you can basically enroll in one of these tracks. You can put some uh, a ranking of preferences because usually the group are around four or five people, so not not many. And it seems that this uh, works very well because the smallest group are easy to uh, meet, to find a meeting, and to discuss. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so that's that's the, how they work. So that's the structure. Okay, thank you. No, welcome, uh, Alicia. Um, I don't have too much to add. I think everyone else did a pretty good job of saying the pros and cons. Um, I guess one of the things that I thought, thought worked really well was that um, Mike was pretty flexible at the beginning of the program. Two of my family members passed away, so it was hard to um, make the meetings and things like that. But he met with me one on one um, so at like a different time, so it kind of all worked out. Um, and also, it was nice to um, meet people from other institutions, too. Um, like, like what was just said, it was kind of nice to hear how things were run at other places, because at least at the University of Washington, it's like the same every quarter, and it's like pretty rigid, like what's taught and things like that. So it's kind of nice to hear how it's done in other places. Um, and then I don't think much can be improved. Um, like we said before, it was hard to kind of all meet at once just because we were in all different time zones. Um, and I think for me, Monday was really difficult because if my calendar notification didn't work, I'd get a notification after the meeting started. So that was, that was my own personal problem, but maybe like better meeting notifications in the future or something like that. Um, for me, I think the, the most positive thing, as I mentioned, was to have um, a group to report to and to hear stories, just like everybody said. Um, you can share experiences, but you also feel um, like, what's the word that I want to use? Let's say encouraged to really achieve your goals and work towards uh, the goals you, you set. Um, I think that Maybe for our, I don't know if all the groups were like that diverse with time zones as ours were was. Um, I think that I don't know if I see the advantage of having people from all over the world because this is interesting. You hear different stories, um, but having people are like in a little I don't know for for scheduling purposes have people a little closer in the time zones maybe would have been more practical. Um, but yeah, I think that I, I agree with Alicia on that, that point that that was, um, I felt like that was a little challenging when we, uh, Mike sent the Doodle poll, we had like one time slot that everybody could meet. So like, that's it or that's it. Um, so, uh, but I absolutely can see the advantage of having people from all over the world. So I'm not sure if that's necessarily a negative, it's just like an added challenge. Yeah. 
add to it. Thank you very much for everyone to share the pro and cons and give helpful suggestion for the next uh, the next round. So uh, the the next round will be next year because with uh, Carrie and the uh, mentors we decide to work for the next six months to improve the program, uh, especially from the uh, mentor uh, side to uh, create some material and. Uh, um, basically to help more the mentors in the next round so probably the next round will be in the middle of next uh, next year i think carry i think it will be may or june like uh, like this year and uh, the goal now is to build materials so but um we also discussed that every mentees that want to be involved in this process for this year is of, of course welcome and uh, that's that's basically the idea so to start the next program of uh, uh, mentoring next year work a little bit more on the uh, advertising uh, both for mentors and mentees because the other thing that we discuss as you pointed out is this problem of time zones so try to have also people in different time zones especially mentors in different time zones because this year all the three mentors were in us so it's very complicated to accommodate other time zones um, the other thing is that I think uh, uh, we will send out the certificate both for uh, mentor and uh, mentees that uh, uh, successfully complete the program and uh, I think that's it. Kari, can you add something? No, Marco, I can't okay. add anything because you did amazing. You <laughs> did everything. <laughs> I want to thank everyone. I, I was jotting down notes. I. I tend to send my boss Tracy messages in Slack and I'm, I'm just, we're just jotting down like, Oh, we've talked about this. We need to talk about this. So this session has been very informative for us. I want to assure everyone that your comments and your feedback, we listen, we really do listen. And we're, we're trying to be systematic about the ways in which we implement the feedback that we receive from the community. So if you don't see something, you know, next month, that doesn't mean we're not, we're not implementing and listening to your feedback. We try our best to start things in more of a pilot phase and then kind of uh, broaden um, the reach. And so everything that you're saying regarding the resources for mentors, the handbook, the time zones, these are all things that we've been talking about for a long time and little by little, we're going to continue to improve. So I want to thank everyone, mentors, mentees. It takes courage to say, I want help. And it also takes courage to say, I want to give help, even though I don't, I know that I'm not an expert in this, in this area. It takes a lot of courage. It takes your time and your passion. And I really do appreciate it so much. Um, tweet out your certificates when you get them and tag the Carpentries. We want to retweet you. We want to sh showcase you. Um, if anyone else has blog posts that they like to collaborate on, we would love to see those as well. We have some in, in the handbook under communications, there's a how to guide for collaborative blog post writing. So check that out if you haven't seen it and it'll give you some tips if you've not written a blog post before. And I think that's all I had. Thank you very much. So thank you all. Do you have something to add? Yes. Tracy, go I ahead. just wanted to say thank you too. It's so awesome to see uh, what you're excited about and people connecting with each other and like the value of the community getting together to talk about these things. And I, I wish everybody was a part. Every time I come to these, I'm like, these are so amazing. I wish everybody was in the mentorship program. So Marco, I'm really excited about the work that this committee is planning on uh, making this process uh, even easier to be engaged with and, and scale. I think it, it's so meaningful and valuable. It's the community that's such an amazing part of the Carpentries. So thank you for your work and your courage, as Carrie says. <laughs> Thank you very much. So the last thing I think uh, we will send out the uh, final survey. Uh, it's correct, Carrie. So there is a survey for That's all right. the- yep. Okay, so we will send you by, by email. So just be sure to complete it because your feedback is super important for the next round. And um, have a nice rest of the day.
or night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.